What's up guys, Wave618 here, it's the 27th of July 2019. So we're gonna do an update video on Bitcoin today. I've got some really interesting points I wanna put out. Price is at this moment in time sitting at a very pivotal level as the thumbnail suggests. And I really wanna elaborate on that. So you, you know very well that I use pitchforks as my one of my key uh, technical analysis tools. And right now we're about to breach a key pitchfork or we have actually breached it. We haven't seen a weekly close beyond it, but I wanna express why we should have some caution at this point. And I need to expand on what I said in my last video, because obviously I was looking, uh, I was talking about this being the end of a WXY correction, which has not yet been invalidated, but because of the breach in the pitchfork, which I'll mention in this video shortly, um, I'm having some doubts about this count and so I want to talk about an alternative scenario. So if that sounds interesting, then stay tuned. Alright guys, so as I say, we've got some really important points to discuss in this video. Now, first of all, I want to just expand on what we said in the last uh, video. So I was using this larger pitchfork here. Obviously, this is our first impulse up, then we had our corrective sequence down. It gave us our first three pivots uh, using our first two waves of the, um, for, to create this original pitchfork. And price had been using these lines pretty nicely and the way I was looking at it was this is a wave one and two and then following that I was looking at this being a wave one two three because it was a very nice Fibonacci relationship between waves one and three coming up to roughly the 1.618 and then as we know the fifth wave in crypto is often rather elaborate and I was looking at this fifth wave starting from here. This was the fifth of the third. So coming up to here, this being a wave one, A, B, C running flat two, this be a three, this be a four, and then five goes up higher than here. Now we can see at this point, wave four was very, very close to overlapping wave one. It pretty much came to the same level as wave one. However, at that point, it did rebound upwards. So I was giving it a chance for that count to, to continue. However, we are starting to come down now and I want, to have a, I want to also elaborate on another key pitchfork. So if we just hide this one. So this pitchfork has actually been containing price very, very well. And I think I put it out in a tweet not too long ago. Um, so this from here, these first two waves allowed us to draw our pitchfork using the first three pivots. Again, original pitchfork suggesting very impulsive price action. And you can see how this pitchfork was really holding price really, really nicely. The low warning line being tested uh, several times at this point here, consolidated along the low warning line, took us to the median line, we then went sideways. Where do we go to the low warning line before shooting up all the way to the upper warning line? Um, then we wicked down to the low median line with closing candle at around the median line. Uh, and you can see these lines really getting respected. Slight overshoot here. Um, came down retest of the upper warning line and then we test our low warning line now for the first time and I think it was I think it was today actually yeah so we've seen a breach of this pitchfork so for me this is ringing alarm bells because we've seen this is a really really key pitchfork first of all but also Bitcoin is you know it's been trending upwards since um, well, it's got to be since his so 15th of December so it's been a, a pretty long uh, bullish run and now we're seeing what I consider a show of weakness here because we're it looks like we're about to break this pitchfork to the downside now we don't have a weekly close we've only got a couple of four hour candles here that have breached it but for me this is significant because if this was to be bullish from this point I'd expect you know a strong move up from here I expect a lot of algorithms buying in at this point. But the fact that we've dropped down and we dropped down quite significantly, uh, for me, this is a show of weakness. And so for that reason, 
although we've not invalidated this WXY that I was talking about in my last video, it's looking ever so likely that we are going to take out this low uh, and it won't take too long. Um, so for that reason, I want to kind of update you guys about how my current thoughts are because I do want to kind of reevaluate and to determine what we can expect at this point because obviously once this gets taken out the question is how far we're going to come down from here now obviously that's going to change the count altogether so i've explained why i was looking at this uh, count as a one two and then this all being part of an extended wave three with this being a wave one two three four and we're in our fifth wave however that's kind of breaking down so we've got to look at it in another way um Obviously, it's not broken down yet, but it's looking likely. That's why I say we should uh, propose an alternative count. So really, there is a good call for this being five waves up. So there is a count for that. So this being our wave one, two, um, and then our third wave. So actually, I'll put the labels on first so just so it's clear. So one, two, three is here, four is here, and five is here. So the reason for this count, you've got your obvious impulse up, correction, and then there is a nice five wave count up to here. There's a one, two, three, four, five waves. Okay, then we get a more complex correction, which is our running flat. So that's what you expect in a wave four, uh, you know, increased complexity. And, um, and then we get our final move up the wave five. Now, on the log scale, it, the wave five doesn't look so significant compared to the wave three, but obviously coming off the log scale, let's just take off all our drawings. This now looks like a typical crypto wave five here, where it's gone a lot more exponential than preceding uh, waves of this five wave count. So this will be our wave one, uh, two, three up to here, running flat wave four, and our five up to here, okay? And this correction looks significant. It really does look significant. And you, you have to suspect that it is correcting the whole move from the bottom. So now the question, the big question obviously is how far does it come down? Um, so just bring down our markers again. Let's go back on our log scale. So Again, you know very well, I use pitchforks to determine how far price is gonna go. Um, so another key pitchfork to be keeping our eyes on is, so we can get rid of that one. This, is, this pitchfork seems to be uh, containing price pretty nicely at this moment in time. So still, I was looking at this as a W, X, Y. Now, if it does come down further, what is the count going to be? Now, obviously, there's there's lots of different Elliott Wave interpretations. So you could have a W, X, Y, X, which who knows, as the X finished, is it going to come a bit higher, then come down? Personally, I think it's going to start coming down from here. Um, so you could have a W, X, Y, X, Z, but personally, my preferred count is it being a WXY, which just hasn't finished yet. So in my last video, we mentioned WXY, and there was lots and lots of confluence at this point. Yeah, I mentioned how it tested previous consolidation uh, at this level here. Uh, we had a nice one-to-one -one relationship between W and Y. Uh, we had a nice bounce off this lower median line pitchfork. And so we did start to rally, but um, we've seen a pretty big sell-off from this point. And I would have expected, just bringing on volume just for a moment. So the volume here, it was kind of, it was on the, the selling, it was the selling volume that gave this spike. And we didn't really see, we saw, we did see some nice buying volume coming in here, but it quickly got cancelled out by this move down now. Okay, now as I say, it's not been invalidated, but I want to put this video out because once it gets invalidated, this is the way I'll be looking at things. So once we see a move below 9,000, this is the alternative scenario that I'm looking at. So what I'm looking at is this being a W, this being our X, and then Y 
going to be coming down further. So probably testing the lower warning line. Now, what other confluence can we look for? So there's th there's that move down to there, uh, down to the lower warning line. Again, using this major pitchfork. Uh, let's see, not that one, but this one. I do feel like this intersection here could offer good support. So this is the pitchfork that uses these first two um, waves to create our original pitchfork. And I do think that at this intersection, we could see a bounce. So it's around 7,300 or yeah, around 7,300. And if we just look across the chart, so let's go on the daily at least, that's 7,300. In fact, let's plot a line, horizontal line at 7,300. So at that intersection. So there, it is a pretty significant level. You can see here, this order block here, this sell off that preceded this aggressive move up. So that's clearly a significant level, yeah? So then we get um, a, a bit of a retest here, a bit of resistance. Again, an order block sitting here Again, nice sell off at this level here, bit of a consolidation at this point. And again, we get two tests around here. So a big wick below, but closing price at around this level and then test here. So for me, that's a significant level. Just looking across uh, historic price action, 7,300 uh, in terms of a, a horizontal level is significant. And it's also giving confluence with these two pitchforks, both the downward pitchfork and the upward pitchfork. So for me, this would be a preliminary target. That's 7,300. Now let's just have a look at Fibonacci retracement. So let's just hide that. We'll keep this pitchfork on because it's still one that we really need to keep an eye on. And so if we're correcting the whole move up, well, first of all, this is our Fibonacci tool that I believe this is the one that so, okay, this is if we use uh, for the log scale. Okay, now 7300 comes, we should have probably kept that line on the chart. Let's keep the 7300 on. So it's around here. Around this point. Okay, so it's kind of sitting in between the 0.382 and 0.5. However, if we now go and look at the Fibonacci retracement on the linear scale, so it's actually giving perfect confluence with the 0.618 retracement, which is what you typically look for in a wave two. Because obviously, if this is a one, two, three, four, five wave count up to here, then when you look for your wave two retracement, typically you're looking for that 0.618 level. Now, using the linear fibs, it's looking like um, yeah, it's providing very good confluence, that 0.618 retracement with this downward sloping pitchfork, with the upward sloping pitchfork. It's also very significant horizontal level, um, particularly with this order block here, but I've explained how those other previous tests of this level earlier. So this really 7,300 would be my preliminary target. Now I know obviously at around 8,500, we've got that um, CME futures uh, gap. And oh, I'm not gonna pull up the chart just now. I think there was a smaller gap around this 7,300 level. So we may get a fill of that as well. Um, so yeah, that is what I'll be looking at. So if obviously we don't all of a sudden overnight see a weekly close, which takes price uh, much higher, and we do see price come below 9,000, I personally would be looking to get back in at around 7,300, okay? And the way I'd look at it is as this major WXY count, where this of the Y wave, this would be our first wave, second wave, third wave. Let's use a Fibonacci extension to have a look at that. So it's coming, it's, would be almost uh, just overshooting the one-to-one -one relationship uh, that's using on the log scale, which is fine. So again, 
that's a, another a one-to-one relationship, which is a very typical Fibonacci relationship for um, W and Y. And the Fib relationship between the larger W and Y, so that's that W and that Y, it would be coming down to the 1.618. So again, another very nice Fibonacci relationship. So that's coming in at 7,200 there. So for me, as I say, I wanted to put this video out to keep you informed really, because obviously I was pretty bullish in my last video saying that we're gonna go up from here. But as I say, there's alarm, alarm bells ringing for me at this moment in time. We've not got invalidated but we, were, we seem to be on the verge of invalidation. So I wanted to put this video out now, um, keeping you guys informed of what my views are on Bitcoin. So yeah, these are the things to look out for. 7,300 really looks like a very, very nice level to get in at, in my opinion, at this, well, should we come down and break 9,000? So I think I've covered everything I wanna mention there. Oh, sorry, there is one other thing. Um, the, the 20 week moving average. So a very significant um, indicator. So this is the green line here. So in fact, let's take off the others. So the green line, this is our 20 week moving average. If we zoom out here, we can see how it kind of maintains the trend and kind of acts as support or resistance. So. Here you can see that to the support very nicely here. Then we obviously it showed some weakness. Again, we it acted as support, kind of wick below. And so it, it doesn't act perfectly. That's another thing to note. We can certainly wick below it occasionally, uh, but it seems to be a general good marker of trend. So again, nice test here, here, and then we start to uptrend. And this is where it really starts to show its value, where you can see from here onwards in this uptrend, so we get a test here, 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 and here, really acts as good support. And then on the downside, it's acting as good resistance here, here, and here, multiple times here, just stayed below it before it eventually did its big sell-off. And so we've during this uptrend, we've not really tested. Now, where is it gonna come in at? So at present, it's at 7,500. Now I've been counting the candles back and 20 candles back comes to around here. So what we're gonna see over the next coming weeks, we're gonna lose these tail candles. And obviously, as long as the new candles produced are higher than these candles, then it's gonna bring the average up. So pretty inevitably, this 20 week moving average is actually gonna come creeping up even higher, probably gonna come up to around 8,000 by the time that Bitcoin price reaches it. Um, so if that is the case, and I said 7,300 is a good target, we're probably gonna see at least a wick down to 7,300, probably then a strong move up with a closing weekly candle at around 8,000. Um, that is what I'd probably expect to see. So I do think the 20 week moving average will be significant in holding the trend, but it's not going to, I don't think it's going to hold it to the T. I do think it's going to slightly overshoot. Certainly we could see a wick down below it. Um, as I say, I've shown all those other indicators that I'm using to determine why I feel that 7,300 is probably uh, a good buy-in. Uh, but that's just looking at the chart at this moment in time. Obviously, as price action comes in, we'll have more information. But um, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there just to keep you guys informed of my current thoughts. So yeah, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, yeah, until next time. All right, take care.